Hey everyone, so if you're planning to get a horse soon, one of the most important things you need to know is the financial commitment that comes with owning a horse. The last thing you wanna do is buy a horse and be unprepared for the costs that come with it. So in this video, I'm just gonna give you an overview of all the costs that come with owning a horse. So when it comes to owning a horse, your expenses don't stop after the initial purchase price. But I thought I would start with the initial cost to actually getting a horse, just because this can be another big factor. And you know what, I'm gonna let Tucker just sit here and graze because I'm sure he's gonna get bored with this video. Finances, you know, no one wants to talk about it. So anyway, the initial cost of owning your horse, what is the purchasing price? So horses vary greatly when it comes to purchasing them. You can buy a horse for $100 or you can buy a horse for thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. So there's a lot of wiggle room there when it comes to fitting in your budget. There's basically three factors that will affect the price of your horse. One factor is training, so how much training your horse has. One factor is registration, so their pedigree and bloodline. And the last factor is the breed. So some breeds are gonna be way more expensive than others. The more training a horse has, the more expensive they're gonna be, or the more specialized training they have, the more expensive they're gonna be. Buying a Grand Prix jumping horse is gonna cost you a lot more compared to just buying a horse that you can ride around and have fun on. So let's talk about registration. If your horse is registered under their breed association, that can affect the price. It can make them be more expensive. And this is just because they have a bloodline that is traced back and you can have a pedigree. You can know what the horse is built for. Like, are they built for barrel racing? Are they built for eventing, show jumping, stuff like that. So if you're on a budget looking for a horse that isn't registered, may be cheaper for you. So Tucker here isn't registered as a POA. He's just considered a grade. That's what you call them. A grade horse is an unregistered horse. So another thing that's gonna affect the price of a horse is the breed. So if you have a Frisian or a warm blood or maybe a Fjord pony, those breeds are in high demand and they're also expensive just because they're a more rare breed and people like them and they want them. So if you want one of those breeds, you gotta be prepared to spend a little bit more money. On the other hand, common popular breeds like quarter horses, Appaloosas, thoroughbreds, those you can usually find reasonably priced just because there's a lot of them and they're pretty common. And even though I love all these breeds, they may not be like in demand as, you know, those rare specialized breeds. If you're purchasing your first horse and not looking for anything in particular, you can usually expect to find a good horse between $1,500 and $4,000. So you can usually find a horse in this price range with decent amount of training. Um, like I said, it's gonna vary. So just make sure you're specific about what you want. So my horses were actually all under $2,000. I got Tucker and Bella for around $650. They were pretty cheap, but they were also unbroke. So <laughs> the reason for their cheapness. Pepper, she had a little bit of training, so she was right at $1,500. And you know, she had basic walk, trot, canter, she could jump cross rails. So that's just to show you guys how the price ranges differ. Another initial cost to consider when it comes to purchasing your horse is a vet check. So this is where a vet will pre-check your horse before purchasing, just to make sure that the horse is healthy and to make sure it's able to do what you wanna do with it. So in the United States, a vet check is gonna cost anywhere from $200 to $500. This really just depends where you are in the country just because living expenses and cost of living is so varied throughout America. It also may vary depending on if you're getting very specialized specific testing on your horse that is not included in the original vet check. So what a vet check usually includes is the vet will listen to the horse's vitals, take a pulse, listen to the lungs and the heart and all that good stuff. They'll look at the horse's teeth to see if they're around the age that the seller is saying that the horse is. They'll also do like a flexion test with your horse to see if there's any signs of arthritis or anything like that. The vet will also have you lead the horse around so you can see if there's any sign of lameness or anything like that. Some specialized tests that you can do that aren't usually in original blood check is a blood test to see if there's any specific diseases the horse may have. Um, you can also do a test like a radiograph just to check the horse's bones and their joints and things like that. They can also run a test on the horse's DNA and genetics to see if they carry anything that could be passed on if you're planning to breed the horse. Um, so that's something to think about just depending on what you wanna do with your horse. Another part of your initial cost of purchasing a horse will be transporting the horse 
to where you're gonna keep it. Since I don't have my own truck and trailer, I usually have a friend move my horses, or maybe if I purchase a horse, the seller agrees to bring the horse to my property, or even I've paid transporters to move my horses. So just depending on how long the journey is, um, transporting can range from like a dollar per mile to even $3 per mile. So when I moved Tucker across the country, it was 1,200 miles overall and it ended up costing me around $1,500. Other times I've moved a horse maybe an hour and I just talked to the seller beforehand and we agreed that I'd pay them $50 to move the horse. So just things like that where you may have to negotiate a little or just search around to see what your best options are. Now let's talk about what to feed your horse and how much that's gonna cost. So there are a few different things you can feed your horse, but the first one I'm gonna start off with is grain. So grain can be used to supplement your horse's diet and also help them hold weight and get the proper nutrients and sugars they need. A 50 pound bag of grain can range anywhere from $15 to $60. Usually the higher quality grain will be on the higher end of that spectrum. So a 50 pound bag of grain may last you anywhere from two weeks to two months, just depending on how much you're feeding daily. Before you purchase grain, it's important to know what your horse needs specifically for them. So all horses are different and they each have their own dietary needs. If you have a horse that keeps their weight easily, you don't need a grain that's gonna be high in sugar. So Tucker is a very easy keeper, so he keeps his weight very well. So I don't feed him a high sugared grain. But on the other hand, if you do have a horse that's maybe a harder keeper and they get thin easily and maybe they need specific nutrients to help them just stay looking fresh, those are other grains you can look at. There's a bunch of different grains, so the best thing to do is to talk to your vet to see what they think could benefit your horse the most. So this is the grain I use for Tucker. It's called Enrich Plus and it's by Purina. And this is a balancing grain, so once again, it's low in sugar and it's just in a pelleted form. This says it's a 30 day supply, so I feed a pound a day and it lasts me exactly 30 days. So again, it's really important to check with your vet to see what they think your horse needs. It's not a good idea to just feed your horse random stuff. Another thing you may feed your horse is hay. So hay can be very important to your horse's diet since it can be used to sustain your horse if there's not enough grass or forage in your horse's pasture. You can also give your horse hay if they're in a stall for some of the time. And this will just help them stay entertained and it's also gonna help them eat continually as they should since they're horses. The cost of hay can vary depending on the location you're in within the country, the time of year you're purchasing, and also the type of hay you're getting and the quality of the hay. So these here are square bales, and these can range anywhere from $3 to $20, wherein round bales can be anywhere from $40 to $100. So obviously the higher quality the hay is, the more it's gonna cost you. So if you are purchasing hay on the cheaper side or any hay in general, it's important to make sure that it is horse quality and not just livestock quality. So cows and goats and animals like that, they can eat things and digest things better than horses can. So horses need a higher quality hay compared to those animals. So you wanna make sure there's no like thistles or foxtail in a horse's hay. Another thing to note is if you wanna save money on hay, it's best to purchase hay during the summertime right after the hay is cut. Most people wait till the fall or winter to purchase their hay. And this is because this is when the grass starts to die and you need to start feeding the hay now. But in actuality, hay will often be more expensive during this time just because it's in low supply because everyone's buying it and it's in high demand. So if you wanna get good prices on hay, I recommend you purchase in the summer. Before you even purchase your horse, it's important to find a place to keep them. If you can't keep your horse on your property, you're gonna have to keep them at a boarding stable, which is where you can pay to keep your horse on the property and use their facilities. There are different types of board that will impact the cost to keep your horse there. The first boarding option I wanna to talk to you guys about is called full care board. So full care board on average in America ranges from 300 to $700. And I think the sweet spot is probably right around 400 or 500. Uh, that's just what I gather from looking at places all across the country since I've lived in different places. So full care board is the highest level of horse care you can pay for at a boarding stable. It basically guarantees your horse turnout, uh, stable, and also that the staff at the barn will see to your horse's daily needs. So the staff may do other things like put the horse's blanket on, spray them with fly spray, hold the horse for the fair, hold the horse for the vet, and just stuff like that. So that's important to remember if you have limited time for yourself to go out and see your horse, a full care option may be the best choice for you. 
Another boarding option is called pasture board, and this is basically full care board, but your horse is gonna live out in a pasture 24 seven, rather than being in a stall half the time. So in America, a pasture board usually ranges from $150 to around $400, with the sweet spot probably being $250 to $300. Another option is called partial board, and this is where you pay to use the land and the facilities, um, but you may also be having to do some work yourself, like feeding the horse or purchasing the grain and stuff like that. So partial board usually ranges from about $150 to $300, and the sweet spot is probably that 250 to 300 mark again. A very budget friendly boarding option is self care board. So a self care board, your horse is on the land and you can use the facilities, but you are responsible for all of your horse's care. So that means if your horse needs to be fed twice a day, you're coming out and feeding them, you're putting out hay, um, you're filling up water buckets and all of that good stuff. So self care board usually ranges from 100 to maybe just over $200. And the sweet spot is probably 150. I used the self care boarding option when I was in school and my budget was tighter. And I would just make sure that I had to go out and see Tucker you know, twice a day and I'd check him and make sure all his needs are met. And if maybe I had to go on vacation, I would arrange with the other boarders to watch him for me while I was gone. Now let's talk about equipment and how much it's gonna cost. So here is a halter, and a halter is gonna cost anywhere from 10 to $60. If you plan on riding your horse, you're gonna need a saddle. So saddles can cost anywhere from 150 to $3,000, and more name brand saddles are gonna be more expensive. So when it comes to English saddles, you're probably gonna pay more for like an M Toulouse brand or a Steuben. I get all my tack used, so my saddle is actually $400, and it's still in pretty good shape, and it's super comfortable. The next piece of equipment is a saddle pad. So this is a super plush saddle pad I have. Saddle pads range from $20 to $250. Once again, it's a name brand thing, but also a quality thing as well. Like you're gonna spend more for a more quality saddle pad. Okay, so now we have a girth and I'm holding it like this so y'all can't see how dirty it is. So a girth is on average gonna cost between $15 and $120. I got this girth used, so it was $15. You're also gonna need a bridle for your horse, and bridles can cost anywhere from $20 to $400. As you guys know, I like to shop on the cheap end, so this was $40. Other things you're gonna need are brushes. A brush set is usually gonna cost you anywhere from $10 to $75. You'll also want a feeding bucket, so I have a feeding pan here and an actual bucket, and these usually cost between five and $10. So the next cost I wanna talk about are medical costs for your horse. Unfortunately, as with anything, accidents happen with horses sometimes. So sometimes your medical costs may be more frequent than others. Usually, if everything goes well throughout your year, your horse should need two appointments with your vet usually one in the spring and one in the fall. The first thing that's gonna be included in your vet costs are the vet call. So the vet call fee is basically the base rate for the vet to come out to your stable. So this can differ depending how far away you live from the vet office and also what time of day you call. So if a vet isn't a mobile vet and they have to travel to your stable, the farther you are away, the higher the vet call rate will be. Also, the vet fee usually differs depending if you call during business hours or if you call after business hours. So after business hours, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive. So during business hours, your vet call is usually gonna be from 35 to $80. And after hours, it's usually $50 to $150. So when your vet comes out twice a year, they're usually gonna give your horse a physical exam. During this exam, they're just gonna look over your horse, make sure they're healthy, they're gonna listen to their vitals, maybe do a body count to determine where your horse is at and where they need to be. So the body count usually ranges from one to nine, one being that your horse is like malnourished and very sickly and thin, nine being that your horse is obese. So they'll number them on that scale. They'll also probably look at their confirmation and look at their teeth and all that good stuff to make sure everything's good. Physical exam should be done at least once a year and it's usually gonna cost you from 60 to $150. Another thing your vet may do at a vet visit is give the shots for the year. Horses usually need shots either annually or biannually. So if you're in a certain area, there may be other shots that are recommended to have. Like I know in our area, it's recommended that you have the botulism shot. Um, but here are the common ones that everyone usually gets in America. One is rabies, 
We have the Eastern Encephalitis, Western Encephalitis, Tetanus, West Nile, and Influenza. But when it comes to those specific area shots, you wanna ask your vet and see what they recommend. Shots usually range from 20 to $60, and that's usually all of them. Um, it shouldn't cost you that much more. Another thing your horse will need at least once a year is teeth floating. So believe it or not, but horses' teeth continue to grow throughout their lifetime. And as horses chew, they develop sharp edges along the outside of their teeth, which can stab them in the cheek. And so their horses will need their teeth filed down. It's pretty weird. It's like how you file fingernails. It's how you file down a horse's teeth. But the vet usually does the teeth floating and they usually require sedation. So it is going to be a little bit more money. So depending on how much sedation you need, teeth floating usually ranges from $75 to $200. So if your horse needs more of the sedation, it's going to be on the higher end. Lastly, you're going to need a Coggins test. A Coggins test is a piece of paper that proves your horse doesn't have equine infectious anemia. So this is an incurable disease that horses get, and it's also super contagious. So it's super important that you have paperwork wherever you take your horse that says that your horse tests negative for that infectious anemia. So the cost for a Coggins test usually ranges from $20 to $60. The vet draws blood, they take it back to the lab, and then they'll usually mail you a copy of the negative Coggins test so you can keep that. So another aspect of horse care that's gonna end up costing you some money is hoof care. So you know how our fingernails are constantly growing? Well, horses hooves are constantly growing. So a farrier is basically someone who sees to your horse's hooves, they're like the pedicurist. On average, horses need to see the farrier every four to eight weeks. So there's a few aspects that are gonna affect the cost when it comes to taking care of your horse's feet. And this may be that your horse either needs their hooves trimmed or that they need shoes. So if your horse is barefoot and they don't wear shoes, all they're gonna need is a simple trimming for their feet and the fairy will do this. So a simple trim will cost anywhere from 30 to $50. Putting shoes on your horse usually costs from 65 to $130. So this is gonna vary depending on how many shoes your horse is getting. So sometimes horses only get shoes on their front feet. Other times they'll get it completely around. Um, when every hoof has a shoe, it can cost as much as $200. So you may be wondering whether or not your horse needs shoes or not. So Tucker here doesn't wear shoes, but I also don't ride him that much. I ride him maybe twice a week. I don't get to ride him as much as I want. He also has very good feet. His feet are really strong and hardy. So if you have a horse that you ride pretty frequently and they also maybe have tender feet, getting shoes on them is a good idea. But the biggest thing I recommend is talking to your vet and seeing what they say. If you like this video, you're definitely going to enjoy our Horse Care 101 video. I'll put the link in the description down below and I'll also link a few other articles that may be helpful to you as you start looking for your first horse. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you found this video helpful, please be sure to leave us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.